All right, you guys uh, had a few questions about calculating epicenter using your PNS waves. So uh, we'll go ahead and go to the lab manual and see if I can help out with that. So I assume we're working on 16.3. Uh, those questions anyways are from there. First thing I would recommend doing is going to page 413. Uh, you have access to this PDF in Classroom. And read about interpreting a seismogram uh, and using the information from a seismograph and calculating your arrival times of PNS waves. So where you see this first big impulse, uh, this jump uh, on your seismogram, that's where your first P wave arrives. Uh, P standing for primary wave. S for secondary wave over here is where you see that next big impulse uh, on your seismogram. And so you need to calculate the time. So this is seven, uh, let's see, these are one minute. So seven hours and 14 minutes is, is the time here. And then you're gonna have to calculate how much of a minute this is between here. So obviously 60 seconds from here to here using your ruler measuring and, and figuring out that ratio and calculating exactly how much time has passed. So um, you're at 14 minutes, 14.2 minutes. And same thing on your S wave. So we'll practice that over here. Uh, in just a second. Uh, next thing I want to point out is on the next page is your travel time graph. So once you find that difference between your P and S wave, then you can use this to calculate how far away your actual epicenter is. And then to find the epicenter you need, hopefully you already know, three different uh, distances from three different seismic seismographs. So anyways, let's go ahead and go over here and we'll figure it out for Sitka. Um, what we need to do is first calculate when that first P wave arrives. So that's right here. I'm going to use my ruler to be as exact as possible. And I'm going to line this up. And again, just like we have in the past, use uh, things on your, your piece of paper to help keep things parallel and straight up and down. But that's going to put me right about here. And if this is six, this is seven minutes, this is eight minutes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They broke it down into ten, so they kind of made life easy for you. And so we're going to go right here on this line. Um, and we go 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're at, again, this isn't going to be seconds because it's broken down into tens, and there aren't 100 seconds in a minute. But we can at least uh, use that information. So we're at... 7.4 minutes uh, for my arrival time, right? So, and that would be 807. So that's what I'd write down right here for my first P uh, wave arrival time for Sitka. Then I need to find my S wave arrival time. Same thing, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna measure where that first big jump is. Again, trying to keep everything parallel as much as possible. Um, it looks pretty close. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five. So my arrival time would be eight minutes or eight hours, 11 minutes and 0.5. Um, this is minutes here. Okay, so now I just subtract those. And if I subtract, I should end up with 4.1 minutes. All right, that's the difference between those two. Then we're gonna go over, and you'd find that for all three of them. I'm just gonna do one uh, for time. For here, what I need to do is I need to calculate where the difference between my P and S wave, okay? And so uh, remember, first thing to arrive is your P wave, then your S wave. And I'm looking for 4.1 minutes. So one, two, can you guys see that? Yeah. One, two, three, four, point one is going to be right about there. I'm going to use my piece of paper and I'm going to draw a line right here and a line right there. And I need to find where between these two lines that that uh, matches up. And so if I keep going till these lines, and again, try to keep this straight up and down, are just about matched up. Need to go just a little bit more it looks like probably right about there uh, and we've got ten or one two three four five six so we're looking at about twenty six hundred 
and this is in kilometers, that's how far away the earthquake is from Alaska, All right? So if we go back here, um, and so I think I got a little bit higher last time. Let me make sure that I'm being accurate. Um, whoop, too far. Pretty good. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, yeah, about seven. So between 26, 2700. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Uh, let's let's take the average and go. Twenty six fifty. I've lost my spot. Okay. So my distance, which I would write down here would be 2650, all right? Um, that's my distance. So now I need to find the other two. Once I've done that, then on a map right here, if I know where my locations are, so from Sitka, Alaska, which is up here, my distance is going to be 2600 uh, or 2700 kilometers away. So using this scale right here, I need to measure 2,700 kilometers and then draw a circle there. Now, if you have a compass, that's going to make it a lot easier. If you don't have a compass, that makes it more challenging. What I'd recommend doing, and I don't have a piece of string on me, um, but I do have a cable. Um, and this is totally like kind of weak action. But anyways... Um, so let's say Sitka's here, and I would have to measure and figure out that, okay, and I'm not going to be real exact right now, but this far is 2,700. So I'm going, um, let's say 2.3, let's see, 2.3. Uh, that would be yeah, 2.3. So if I measured... On my wire here, 2.3, draw a line here, and I'm going to draw a line there. I don't know if you can see those. But now I need to try to hold this steady and then use this. And if you had a string, you could like tie knots, but you're going to draw a circle around and figure where that is. Now, once you kind of know, if you have your points, you'll kind of know where these are going to end up, where they're going to all intersect. Oh, you couldn't even see that. You can see my awesome skills. So try that again. So here, we're just taking this and we're using this and trying to hold it in place to get where my, my line is. And those didn't line up very good at all. But uh, once you know where, you don't have to draw a full circle. Uh, because once you have your different spots and you find out that, oh, well, it's going to be somewhere about here or somewhere there, then just draw like a quarter of a circle. Using a string uh, would be good. You could also use um, something rigid. Uh, when I was making my quarter pipe, I had to draw a big circle for the transition, and I used a two by four. And so I drilled a hole for my pencil and nailed it in the other side, and then I let it swing around to form my compass that way. Something like that could work. Again, if you have a compass, that's best, but if not, uh, get creative. Pull a shoelace out of your shoe or something else and uh, figure out where that epicenter is. So hopefully that helps you guys and makes a little bit of sense. If it doesn't, email me, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to help you out and make another video if needed. All right, we'll see you guys later.